You know what? I'm just going to go out and say it. Ratchet and Clank a Drift Apart is not worth full price on your PlayStation 5. What? You son of a bitch. You no good damn What's going on everybody? Bauer Kills here and if you're new to this channel, I've got 32 years of day-to-day -day gaming XP. I cover all three consoles significantly, I live stream and most importantly, I'm called Passion Personified. <laughs> because I bring very passionate opinions and thoughts on both games themselves as well as industry topics to your doorstep and I do it in a way that cuts through all the BS that is in the field in the industry here today you get objectivity and you also get some some hard-headed opinions as well and, and a lot of laughs that sounds like it's your type of thing if you can get into that then what I would like you to do is invite the like button over to your house to play a game of Mortal Kombat 2 but disable the Super Nintendo controller that they'll be using set the stage to the pit too and when you're done beating them knock them up into the pit and also subscribe to the channel without further ado let's get into this ratchet and clank is an extremely odd game from the perspective that it is objectively a very solid very good game the graphics in particular are absolutely awe-inspiring I, I can't get over how good the game looks i think it's easily the best looking game i've ever played in my life and the second planet in particular looks photorealistic it is like the pinnacle of when i think of what a next generation game could or should look like, I think about that. And yet as I'm, as I'm playing through it, I'm noticing things about it that, that make it just simply impossible to recommend as a full price title. And it's really a shame because right now there's really only three exclusive next generation titles on the PlayStation 5 that you can really go out and play. One of them, of course, is a launch title was Demon's Souls, um, which is a remake of an older game and is a but a true next generation game that was made for the PlayStation 5 specifically. Then you have Returnal, which is similar, right, in this regard. It's a PlayStation 5 exclusive that was made with the PlayStation 5 in mind, straight for the PS5, and it looks and feels like one. And then Ratchet and Clank, which looks like a PlayStation 5 title, to the point where I overreacted to it in my previous E3 video, where I just kind of said in there, if you haven't played it, click off this video and go pick it up. What? I love garbage. And since then, as I've played through it, I, I, I've just come to the realization that it's ultimately pretty hollow. It feels shallow and just kind of like a mediocre overall title. And it's hard to say that because I love Insomniac games and you can tell that they've put so much time and effort into a lot of the little details. And especially the graphical prowess of this game is absolutely stellar. You look at it and your eyeballs fall out of your head and then you're searching for them and then your jaw falls out because you're trying to figure out how this type of experience from a graphic standpoint is possible. controls well it can be charming at times but the game's kind of lacking any real significant humor like i've been belly aching at other ratchet and client games in the past that's really missing here but as i started playing through it right away i noticed issues the game was the only game so far that has fully crashed my playstation 5 to the point where i had to completely and totally restart it couldn't go back out to the xmb it froze my playstation 5 and i had to actually unplug it which really did not make me feel good so this happened three or four more times <laughs> Right, this is like in the first level, there's like a parade going on in the very first level. And what I ended up doing was deleting the save entirely and starting new. And then this happened again. For the love of God! Later on, two or three planets later, and now I'm just find myself wondering, am I going to get to another place here where uh, or I'm going to have to either restart my save or, or load another save. So you got some technical issues, but you know, ultimately that's not the end of the world. It's worth suffering through if the game quality is high enough. We've all played Skyrim or any of Bethesda's older golden age kind of open world release titles, right? Where you're, you know, 
freezing every time you touch water or, you know, every time you play, you're going to get a blue screen where you're just going to reload the game back through and play it again anyway, because it's worth the hassle. But Ratchet and Clank doesn't really feel like it's, it's ever really worth the time. If that was a significant issue that persists, that it would be worth going back to play through it. Another issue I know is with it practically immediately is not only how unbelievably linear the game is, where it's essentially a tunnel for much of the game, there are invisible walls everywhere. And that's extremely noticeable when we're talking about a quote unquote next generation experience. That invisible wall syndrome is blatant. And it's just, it's really jarring, right? Because sometimes you can see that in the environment, it's kind of like that barrier that's moving and it looks like, you know, like fishnet. So you know very clearly, okay, I can't really go over there. But there are a lot of other instances in the game where you, you, it looks like some place that you can go and then you go to do it and you just hit the wall, you see the fish net for a second, then you just drop to, to not to your death, but you get respawned on a ledge somewhere nearby. It's just an incredibly linear experience and uh, restrictive for a next generation title. But the issues kind of persist in the gameplay as well. Um, combat is solid. But it's unremarkable. Game is like 90% combat. If you've played the first Ratchet and Clank, you'll know exactly what to expect here. Truthfully, I barely registered his attack. He's incredibly frail and his arms are weak. And when I punched him, he dropped so quickly I thought he was diving towards the ground. What you're going to run into are weapons that aren't as intuitive. Weapons that almost feel like they have no point of upgrading them. And, and kind of the reason why is because every Mrs. Zircon that you come across practically in the game you get handed a new weapon to use. And typically, you know, when you're getting a wide variety of diverse weapons in a game, that's a really good thing, but it actually hampers Ratchet and Clank in, in, in that, like, you know that you're about to get a new weapon and you haven't had really any time to experiment or try out the, we you know, the weapon before it or to let alone upgrade it. It just feels like, like you're literally getting a new weapon constantly throughout the game and it kind of takes away that awe factor. It's just like really weird. It'd be like the equivalent of being like, oh, I'm in the mood for pizza. I like pizza. I like it. And then having every major chain deliver you five of them. Like, what am I going to do with all of this? That platforming emphasis that Ratchet and Clank has always really been known for is more or less completely and totally missing from this title. And I was not expecting that at all. I'm not prepared. I really am not prepared at all. The writing is solid. It's okay. Killing is badong. It, it feels like a Pixar film. But it also feels like it's like a popcorn flick. Like you ran to the movie theater and you saw Van Helsing where it's like, oh yeah, it's good for a couple of hours. But then when you're done with it, you're never going to go back and watch it again. You're not going to go buy it on DVD. Ultimately, you're going to play through it. There's a challenge mode after you beat it, but there's no trophy tied to it. There's no real incentive whatsoever to play challenge mode. Um, it, and it just feels like a very quick, brief saunter through a traditional Ratchet and Clank game with better graphics that isn't as satisfying or compelling to play and it ultimately ends up feeling kind of shallow and hollow as a result of kind of all of these different things playing together. I think this is a perfect example of a game that has just been over heralded. Essentially one brief run through for $70 and for $70 I actually kind of regret picking it up at full price despite knowing how much time and effort I'm sure Insomniac Games who's a fantastic developer has put into it but despite the the lack of true next generational titles that are out there I just simply can't recommend it to you if you're looking for a new game you're gonna have to ask yourself is is a 10 to 12 hour run through a game once where you you play through it and then you put it down and never play it again is that worth seventy dollars it's not for me but it's ultimately up for you to decide. Don't, you know, don't get pulled into the overhype. I was really awestruck by how pretty the game looked. And because there is such a strong dearth of truly next generation games out there, it really felt initially like Ratchet and Clank was one of those. But as I've played it more, I just find myself playing other games and really, really regretting throwing those $70 at it. But anyway, hopefully some of that made sense to you guys. This is an odd one. It's really hard to kind of like put my finger on exactly one thing that it is. It makes the game feel end up feeling just kind of average and more of a launch title for a new generation than anything else. But that's going to do it, guys. That's all I got for you here today. Subscribe to the channel so you can get any of these videos as they come up live. Click that notification bell as well and select all notifications so that you don't miss any of my videos 
video uploads or when I go live for my Arsenal streams. I also live stream here as well. So thank you so much for your time and your support. Stay healthy. God bless. And we'll see all of you in that next video.